everybody? It's your boy, the Big Jimmy Dory, coming at you again, asking you what it do as we go ahead and talk about tonight's AEW Dynamite. Good show, very good show. With one part, with key stories going on through my usual complaints, but all in all, still a good show. How good? Let's find out. It's time for the review. So we get tonight's action start off with Young Boy Jack Perry going up against Mr. Mayhem himself, Wardlow. In their first encounter in quite some time, I believe, over the summer when it was Jurassic Express versus MJF and Warlock. Now then, right now, immediately, Jungle Boy's taking the initiative, using his, his speed and his agileness to, ev to evade, counter, and slowly start tearing at Mr. Warlock, which he does very well until he gets down to the ground, trying to go ahead and pop up top. Unfortunately, he gets caught, tossed into a corner post, which is where Warlock begins his slow destruction of Jungle Boy and there were some fantastical spots and encounters on um, Jungle Boy's part. He, boy, well, there was a counter from an avalanche power bomb into a massive ass hurricanrana. Um, I believe he also had a great, he did have a great DT fleet spot, and even managed to avoid Warlow's dangerous, dangerous, dangerous top rope knee combination. But unfortunately, once this thing got taken up to the ramp. And Jungle Boy went to the top one time too many. Not only did he get caught, but he got put in the two F tens for the one, two, three. Warlow winning the very first match in the tournament. I actually believe I had him going for a victory. I believe I hope so. I'm gonna have to compare it with my other with my prediction and my previous uh, video. But nevertheless, that was how it started. Good shit. That was definitely honestly a four and a half on the starter. I fucking I dug it, I felt it. I was in it, the crowd was in it, the energy was great. I didn't really notice any actual fuck up or flip up to the match. This was damn good. Good shit. Good shit. So, after that match, we we get a little, uh, we show, we get to see what happened after Dynamite off the air, where Kingston went ahead and said his grievances on the mic and basically let Moxie know, I didn't quit. It's not over. You changed. You sold out. You didn't bring your family with you. You forgot the rest of us, and this is what happens. Leading to a Moxley promo promoting the match. Now, the commentary already said that this was going to be an I quit match, and I find it to be a problem because if they would have waited until after the Moxley video promoting him and uh, Eddie Kingston at uh, Full Gear, it would have flowed so much better. So that's a bit of a problem that I found on commentary tonight. But you know what? It's not too bad, and we're going to get this. Actually, later on in the night, Eddie Kingston comes off with his own rebuttal, basically saying that, you know what? The way that you said I became, I did it because I had to. Because being, because not going that way got me nothing but look at me now. My family is doing great. I am having a AEW title opportunity. Main eventing a pay-per-view for this company. And all that's left to do is to take the belt from you. In both, both promos, there was intense, it was, it was intense, epic, and so pretty much passionate, deep into it. Like, this story is growing on me, and I want a longer feud between these two. Or at least I want them to come across this feud at a later date once this initial round goes on. This could definitely be something that could happen over a year's time. Not directly, but just dancing around it, they will be so fucking great. So, moving on, we're going into the next match in the TNT World Championship Elimination Tournament. Where we have Kenny Omega going up against Sonny Kiss. Sonny Kiss replacing Joey Janela, who himself was around someone who had became COVID positive, probably during the GTW um, collective weekend. So Joey's out quarantining himself. Please, Joey, get better. Much love, everything. So in this day, we're going to get Sonny Kiss. But Kenny! Kenny's entry has something quite special on it tonight. You see, Kenny started boasting his accolades. Like, really just showing off to say, listen, I am the best. I'm the best bout machine, former world champion. I am the best of the best. Check out my accolades from 17, 18. Listen, listen, all that. Even coming out with two ladies with the brooms, iconic of the cleaner himself. Just right there, both of it. He he was fair, kind of grandiose in this. There's a reason I'm talking about this so much because the match went fucking fat. Literally, literally, I I stopped the way, grabbed the pants like a right, got me, took my tea, and the match was over with. 
Like, it looked like it was going to be a nice little hearty match. Fuck no. What happens? Well, let's see. After shaking Sunny Day, they're thinking, this is going to be, you know, a fucking match. You know, they're going to get some, they're going to get some nice action in. We got V-Trigger, One Wing Angel. That's it. Third, 28 seconds for this fucking match. Dude. I guess if you want to say that Kenny's back, this is the hell of a way to do it. It actually puts more pressure on everyone else. Jesus. It's tough. It's real tough. But you know what? Here's what it is. Did what it did. It was cool. I am slightly disappointed because I wanted to see Sonny and Kenny really mix it up. So all I can say is that this really just gets three out. This is like three out of five for me. You know, it's okay. Okay. So after that match, we get two interviews back to back. We get Cassidy inside doing his thing. He's not really giving much of a care. Nonchalantly, just being whatever. But then we also have Cody coming. But then we have Cody earlier in the day giving his interview with Dasha where he... And he makes the statement that there's going to be a stipulation on this match. Basically, champions advantage. So, officially, AEW, at least for, I'm assuming the TNT title, has champions advantage. Which, has there not been a thing before? I, I will have to go back and check. But I should know. Later on in the night, we also find out that, it, that due to the Dark Order making threats against Cody and Cass, that, that this match will be a lumberjack match. So I am definitely digging it and into it. This is definitely gonna be dope and fine. So you know what? Cool beans. Cool beans. Next, we have match of the motherfucking night. The match at the crowd, before it even started, was already behind, cheering and excited for Penta versus Ray. This was the motherfucking hype. There is little that I can say about this match that I didn't say earlier, but I'm gonna try. Because it starts out with brothers basically it's, 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 having, it's Phoenix sticking a hand out. The Penta's like, brother, I want a good match. The Penta, the Penta, he's just... But inevitably, he does shake the hand. Good, honor, I like it. So we're gonna have a good brotherly match. And these bros have hit, have history that basically got laid out in commentary. Commentary did a damn good job laying out the fact that they, for a long time, never acknowledged that they were even brothers. Met each other multiple times on, on the indies. On the scene in Mexico, in Lucha Underground, in Impact. I think it's Impact. And between the counters, which there were plenty early on, between the the, the ridiculous acrobatics of Phoenix, go up going up a top turnbuckle, corkscrew poncho. Not to mention Penta. Not holding back and really laying in. Penta is a fucking hitter, bro. He is a fucking hitter. This literally shows why what, what AEW definitely needs more. It needs lucha. It needs cruise. It needs cruiserweights. It needs super Ju It needs junior heavyweights. Like this is why AEW needs it needs these flyers. Remember, WCW back in the day, one of its best things to pull in the crowd was these flyers and these lucha doors, and definitely, definitely show that AEW should be bringing in more of. I mean, it's an actual division. But that's, that's either here or there because there's a common thread going on. Throughout this match, Penta was comfortably leading and controlling. It seems that every, every time Penta was in charge, he got quite a bit of time handling up on Penta with every little mistake count. But literally, Penta's offense is either strikes or speed and high flying, which which, which Phoenix, I'm sorry, Phoenix's offense was strikes and flying. And every time, he, and majority of the time when he tried to fly, Penta was there to shut the shit down. There was even a brief, a brief, um, fake out. You know, like, like, oh my God, this match was just every fucking thing. And in the end, in the end, uh, it looked like Phoenix pulling out a fucking desperation move out his ass, managed to get the one, two, three on Penta. I literally don't think I could have pictured who would have won this because either man could have gone up against Kenny and had a reason. Penta, it could have been him because him and Kenny still have the whole thing from all in. But then there's Ray, which him and Kenny have a thing because Kenny is still the triple A mega champion. As far as I know. So they definitely need a rematch, which 
gotta say, I don't know. I don't know. Like, obviously, Kenny had... Kenny had a fucking sweep. Looks about as good as he should be. But you do not fucking sleep on Phoenix. That makes next week clash between them something that I'm curious about. We got three weeks before full gear. And even though I, I feel in my heart that is going to be the inevitable story that we're going to have between Kenny and Hangman, a part of me is hoping they don't do it. That we get different guys to be put in this main event, this main event position. This match for the commentary, for the in reaction, for the story. And Eddie Kingston was added that. Eddie Kingston was on in commentary added to it. This is a five star banger, like bro, bro. This match gets five. Gets five for me. It's five. Five out of five. Just no wait. I don't wait. Do I do? I don't do fucking numbers. I guess I'll do it tonight. I'll do it for the night. So following that, we have Dark Order in an interview with Colton Banner, basically talking about how you know they're here and how John Silver doesn't fucking like Cole, but he's gonna be behind him. He's gonna go on and be the new AEW World Champion. And after next week, whenever Cassidy has and, and Cody has his match, you're gonna basically go in and beat their ass and everything. Like, it was fun. John Silver is my favorite member of the Dark World. There's just no go behind the nigga it's fucking hilarious. He's basically the reason why the fans are loving it so much. But him being there for Cole is, you know, nice, but really, who knows the corner? So then we have the Hangman and Colt match. And it sucks because they had to come, they had to follow that match, but they did a decent job. Where, but here's the thing about that match and what it shows. Call the banner. With as you unique and off of the ass with a comedic style. It's not enough to keep keep uh hanging off the bumper now. Heyman did not get an easy win. He didn't get a too easy win, right? Like, like, it seems like even after Colt was beginning to mount his comeback, every little comeback. Page was like stopping it and going. It's like he was like, start, stop, start, stop. Like coming back, no stop. Okay, cool, but I'm gonna figure it out and start to continue what I'm going. To, like, like this show, Hangman himself is on another level above Colt, and Colt is a fucking bet. Colt style is unique. But Colt went at this match more or less honestly, not done too dirty. Obviously, it was some dirt, but not too much. But that's the thing about it is when Hangman does win this match. What gets me is the fact that afterwards, when the Dark Order came in to check on Cole, they didn't jump on on a Hangman, which is interesting. I'm not sure what's going on there, but it could be that without their leader, they don't have that same evil, vicious streak behind them. Who knows? This is quite interesting. But this match itself, it was all right. It was cool. I would definitely give it a three and a half out of five. I fucked with it. I fucked with it. After that, we get a brief video package Promote basically promoting the uh, Sam Guevara and Hardy match that's going to happen, and it's going to happen at Full Gear. It, it is going to be the Elite Deletion match. This match, which we should have gotten some time ago, we are finally going to get it. Although I believe it was going to be under different circumstances, under different circumstances, maybe we could get blood and guts. I'm just saying, I still have not received my blood and guts, and I want it. I want it soon, but that's neither here nor there because. We then, you know, have to go in. Then Team Taz comes out to uh, bear their grievances with every fucking day. With not everything, really, just between Will Hobbs and Darby. Darby getting the chance. Will Hobbs and I take an opportunity to have to them, so you don't have to get this, you know. You have to risk getting his ass whipped, but you know. That's that. It's all good. Everybody's pretty fair and like. Ryan can't just take up too much time. Taz is enjoying talking. And Ricky Starks. Good on the mic still. Ricky definitely will be a big player in AEW. Down the line. I definitely would want to see more of him. He's got a um, great opportunity to just become a fucking legend. Like charisma, the in-ring skill. Not too flashy, but definitely traditional and solid. He, he could be a wrestler that, um, that, that, that uh, pro wrestling purist of a classical nature would enjoy. Then we have the fucking diner demo. Nothing more I can say other than this is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my goddamn life. 
between these two first initially fighting over who's going to have the bloodiest steak, starting out with MJF going well and Jericho calling him a bit of a bitch by just going with, I want a medium well. And then you see where that's going to go. With them basically discussing the fact that, you know, they need to be together. Also, the ratings rule of fucking sucks. Jericho calls it out. Hopefully we never hear, hear MJF say it again. If this is one of MJF's rare misses. Which I hope was on purpose, because you are far better than that. But, the best piece of this is whenever they unified, when they come together to basically say that Orange Cassidy ain't shit. Then break in the song and the musical number. Basically, BTE is taking over AEW Dynamite. I feel sorry for anybody trying to say that they're going to be another real sport, which they do at times, but you got to get a BTE shit for fans like me. And that musical taking was fucking amazing. I'm sorry, there's nothing better than that. Y'all can fight me on it. There's nothing funnier but a greater than this goddamn segment. You try and tell me something, I'll tell you it won't happen. You know who couldn't do this? WWE couldn't do this. WWE couldn't even pull it off. Never. They don't have the creativity. They don't have the, the willingness to take risks like this. And it was fucking fantastic. Oh yeah, also we're going to be having a town hall meet with them for the next week. Uh, next, at 9.30, which is the official women's slide. We have Britt Baker going up against Colleen King, which is great for Colleen King to get her time and shine on Dynamite. Problem is, it's the same problem I have with every fucking women's match in AEW on Dynamite. A, you don't get much time. Less than 10 minutes. B, you are not giving me new people to sing into. Like, literally, how can y'all not cut some time to give these women, like, at least 20 minutes? If you're going to give a 10-minute match, that works. And then from there, you know what the fuck you do? You build shit. Introduce more women. I can't really say shit because they have dark. And I check out dark sometimes, but goddamn, I need more on the main show because the people don't see it. Hopefully, hopefully, with whatever the fuck this extra hour is gonna be for main television is that Dynamite's gonna get or AW is gonna get, make use of it for the women. Other than that, two out of two and a half out of five. That's it. I, I'm always gonna penalize not having shit for the women on on the on the main show. Woo! Deal with it. Damn you! And now for the main fucking event, which I'm not about to break that whole thing down. There's too fucking much. All I will say is that it was fucking, it was fantastical, hella enjoyable, a lot of shit. But honestly, it really shows the fact that Dynamite, the Dynamite, a show can be can be main evented with four four teams in the tag division, and it's not even the best of the tag division, it's still great and it's still developing. Honestly, the biggest spot, the biggest shining spot in the entire match is Mark Quinn getting a shot. Look, I don't want Private Party ever broken up, but Mark Quinn is going to be the breakout. Isaiah Cassidy, he could probably do some shit and, be, and definitely come up, but Mark Quinn definitely is a champion in the making, be it TNT, be it um, AEW World Champ. Even could be brief or as a, as a uh, transitional, champ, transitional champion, but you give him the chance to grow and show what he got. This guy has main event on him. Literally. Literally. I really do hope this NJPW AEW relationship really comes together because seeing cross promotional talent, seeing these guys go off to Japan for a little while to work and get bigger over there to come back and really take the thing. Because I can see. Private Party definitely, definitely adding to NJPW's um, lacking tag division and Super, and, uh, Super Junior tag division and them coming back much bigger stars. Anyway, the Bucks come out with the win, vindicating themselves from the loss that they took last year in the previous tournament when trying to crown the first AEW tag champion against um, against Private Party to defend forward. It was fucking great. It was a lot to go on. Please watch the match if you have not because it's just packed, but this was a damn good show. That match itself is going to get four out of me. There's no way it's going to get anything less. Especially because in the post-match, we have FTR and the Bucks facing each other in the ring, only for Tully Blanchard, bitch, as posing as the um, timekeeper to come in, whack Matt on the back with the motherfucking chair. Then we get a we get a fight power driver on Nick, so he's down. Then we get a stand chump, stare, stare, we get a chair stomp from the mid rope uh, on the Nick on the Matt's leg, like Jesus fucking Christ. This feud is good. AEW has very good feuds going on, but I 
But if y'all don't get this women's division together soon, on the main show, Doc, Doc they get plenty of love. But on the main show, you're going to fuck yourselves. You will. You will. Honestly, I feel like where AEW is now, they need more time. Period. They need that extra hour. Legitimately. Just like NXT could use the extra hour. AEW needs to because there's too much fucking talent to where they're not showing off enough, especially the women. You can leave dark for for your for your lower mid carters and your and your uh and your projects, your future projects, but not completely for the women's division. But also you gotta understand that AEW is definitely having to rebuild their women's division after losing contact with the women in Japan, who were essentially the best parts of their women's division, which honestly has never really been stacked. But hey, we got time and we'll get to it. But for right now, this is a damn good show. I'm gonna go ahead and give it three out, uh, 3.5 out of five. Good night, good shit. I'm going to go, because I'm going through my hair. Y'all have a good one. We out. Peace.